question for you. What makes for a perfect daily driver? You probably want something practical, good on gas, and fast without being uncomfortable. But today, we're talking about the complete opposite of that, with these 10 cars that are an absolute nightmare to drive every day. And we'll go in order from best to worst for daily driving. Make sure you stick around until the end for the really crazy ones. So let's jump right in with a bit of a controversial one the Mazda RX-8. Now, don't get me wrong, the RX-8 can be a fun car to drive, with three pedals and 230 brake horsepower from that unique rotary engine. But we're talking about daily driving, and you'll soon realize why so few rotary cars have ever made it to production. Now, we could forgive the poor gas mileage, but when you add to that the need to top up the oil every month or so, and the worrying amount of RX-8s that have needed engine replacements, and the fact that if you start it cold and shut it down without fully warming it up, it floods and won't restart, and you can start to see why you wouldn't want to rely on this Mazda as your only car. The only good thing is that RX-8s can be found for under 10 grand, but you can still find a better sports car for around the same price. Now, if you want to spend a lot more on your unpractical sports car, then take a look at the Alfa Romeo 4C. The Italians know how to make beautiful cars, and the 4C is no exception. Although, there are a lot of good reasons to not own one. Now, it might look small, but this sports car is as wide as a truck, and no power steering means you'll get a free workout when trying to maneuver it in and out of tight places. Then there's the cargo space, or lack of it. Because even though this is a mid-engine car, the front hood is sealed shut, and you only get a tiny little trunk out back behind the engine, meaning whatever you put in there is getting hot. So, no carrying ice cream back there. Then there's the interior. It feels like it belongs to a cheap little city car rather than a $70,000 sports car. But if there was ever a prize for the nastiest plastic interior, then the Hummer H2 would probably be at the top of that list. Long before Hummer went all in on electric cars, they started out making armored trucks for the military, then road-going versions to sell to the public. But things started to go wrong when the H2 hit the road in 2002. This was no longer a tough, military-inspired off-roader. What we got instead was the front frame from a pickup truck, rear frame from a Chevy Tahoe, and a body that looks like it came from one of those little plastic Tonka trucks we all had as kids. And things don't get better on the inside. The interior may be almost as big as a football field, but it's filled with the cheapest plastics you've ever seen. And those tiny square windows don't exactly make it easy to see out of. There are a ton of SUVs to choose from these days, and the H2 should be near the bottom of your shopping list. They don't work well on-road, and they don't work off-road either, but at least they get terrible mileage. Another American car that shouldn't be on anyone's wish list is Chrysler's attempt at a sports car the Crossfire. Now, if you look at the spec sheet, the Crossfire actually sounds pretty good. It's a rear wheel drive coupe with the Mercedes V6 under the hood that makes over 200 horsepower. But that's where the good news ends because Chrysler managed to mess up almost every other part of the car. You get a cheap looking interior, too much body roll in the corners, and you get more feel through an Xbox controller than you do from the steering wheel. Hey, I know looks are subjective, but I'd say this car has been hit by the ugly stick a few too many times. And while we're hating on the folks at Chrysler, let's talk about something even worse than the Crossfire, the PT Cruiser convertible. The standard PT Cruiser is a bad car. It's slow, ugly, and badly made. But with the convertible version, things got even worse. All structural rigidity was lost when Chrysler chopped the roof. So a huge roll bar had to be fitted behind the rear seats. And besides looking like a giant carry handle, it ate into the already limited space in the back. So practicality, quality, and driver enjoyment are all in very short supply with the PT Cruiser convertible. It's no wonder people started calling them the PT Loser. Now any Top Gear fans out there will know all about this next car. It's the one that's known for spending more time on its roof than it is on its wheels. That's right, the three-wheeled Reliant Robin. Now the little Robin is a rare sight over here in America, but I'm sure you've seen them rolling over all over the internet. The reason they roll so easy is because of the bizarre three-wheeled layout, with two at the back and one central wheel at the front. So go around a corner at much more than a walking pace and there's a good chance you're gonna end up on the roof. Now, even if it had four wheels, it'd still be a bad car. 
and it's probably gonna go down in history as one of the worst cars ever made. But only having three wheels did have one advantage. In some parts of the world, you can drive the Robin with nothing more than a motorcycle license. But something you most definitely need a full license for is the V10 beast that is the Dodge Viper. Now, real quick, before we get to the Viper, if you're trying to buy your dream car, be sure to check out the Ideal Car Strategies to avoid the seven common mistakes people make all the time when buying used cars. Now, the Viper will definitely be a dream car for a few of you out there. It definitely is for me. And if you're lucky enough to have two or three cars in the garage, then go for it. But as a daily driver, it'll be more stressful than driving around with an actual Viper on your lap. Early Vipers had no traction control, no ABS, no exterior door handles. You didn't even get any cup holders. The car was basically a big go-kart with an eight liter V10 under the hood. That amazing engine might be enough to make you forget about all the problems. But you gotta be a little brave to drive one of these every single day. It's hot, it's cramped, it rides like a race car, and with the early RT10 version, the optional roof is really meant to be a dust cover, so don't get caught in the rain. It takes a certain kind of person to daily drive, ask me how I know. Just like with our next car, the Lamborghini Countach. Now this has got to be one of the most iconic cars ever made. It looks exactly like a supercar should. It's covered in wings and vents, and not trying to be too serious. But unfortunately, Lambos from the 70s and 80s aren't actually quite as fun to drive as they are to look at, and require a great deal of skill and bravery to get the most out of them. We could fill an entire video with reasons you shouldn't daily drive one of these raging bulls, but here are just a few. They have no driver's aids whatsoever, extremely heavy steering, extremely heavy clutch, and don't even think about trying to reverse without getting halfway out of the car to see what's behind you. Turns out those scissor doors are actually surprisingly useful. And then there's the chance that that V12 might overheat when you're waiting at a stoplight. Now, our next car might be 30 years newer and a lot faster, but also more dangerous. In 2007, the Caparo T1 was promised to be a Formula One car for the road with a 200 mile an hour top speed and hitting 62 miles an hour in under 2.5 seconds. But things didn't quite go to plan and only 15 were built before the company went bankrupt. This was never going to be the ideal road trip car with no doors and no roof, but it actually turned out to be downright deadly. Multiple journalists were injured while testing with problems like sticking throttles, suspension failures, and even the floor falling off. So it's fair to say you wouldn't want to drive the T1 anywhere, let alone use it as a daily. I could be into it though. Would you daily drive any of these cars? Let us know the worst car you've ever driven down in the comments. Oh, and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you next time here on Ideal.